Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to Simon's Cat Logic. We'll be finding out from a cat expert why cats behave the way they do. Today, we're going to look at crazy time. So, crazy time is based really on all four of my cats, but in particular Jess, who I always think of as being the, the, the craziest out of all four of them. She's the oldest of my cats, a little tortoise shell, and tortoise shells are known for being a little bit crazy anyway. Of course, she gets this kind of pent up of natural energy, as all sort of animals do, and uh, rather than go outside and run around in trees and things, she suddenly goes crazy and runs around up and down the stairs climbing over the furniture. Yeah, but that's Jess all over. So many owners wonder, why do their cats do this? Well, if you think back to how cats are in the wild, they'd spend, you know, maybe up to 40 hunting trips a day. Um, so a lot of energy expended. Whereas if you think about our cats, they often have a much more sedate lifestyle. So that's why they still feel that need to burn off excess energy. One of the things you can offer your cat is interactive fishing rod toy play. So this is where, like I say, you get a rod with a string and some feathers at the end and, and move it around as if it were a prey species. So it depends on the style of play that your cat likes, whether it's um, a bird type in the air, like this, or whether they want a mouse to type across the floor. No self-respecting prey species ever goes up to a cat and says, hi, here I am. So try to avoid uh, waving a toy in the cat's face, have it moving away from them. Cats also can't see that well under 25 centimetres, which is another reason why cats don't really seem interested in playing when it's so close to their face. And they're a bit more far-sighted, so again, move the toy away from them. And that's when you'll see the pupils dilate and they'll go into the crouch position and do the bum wiggle and go after that toy. <laughs> it's important to let cats catch and kill the toy because this gives cats the sort of satisfaction of catching it. And by doing that, that helps them release endorphins or happy hormones, so they, they feel really good when they're playing. Now, once you've finished playing, do store the fishing rod toys safely out of the cat's reach. Cats are crepuscular. This is a scientific way of saying that they are most active during dawn and dusk, and that's because that's when their prey are most active as well. So a lot of owners will find that their cats have their crazy time at night which can be really frustrating when you're trying to get to sleep. The nice thing about Crazy Time is every cat owner recognises it. So as soon as I did the film, I knew that a lot of people would go, oh, that's my cat, my cat does that, because it's such a, it's such a cat thing to do. Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to Simon's Cat Logic. We'll be finding out from a cat expert why cats behave the way they do. Today, we're looking at love. Huh? 
I've had cats all my life. It really helps me when I'm thinking of my stories because obviously cats can't pick up baseball bats or, um, you know, climb up windows or, or use their hands. So it allows me to use my imagination, but also I can base it solidly in what a cat would think. By having cats all my life, I, I kind of know, I'm kind of inside their heads and how they work things out. Well, Butterflies is a nice Valentine's film. One of the stars of Butterflies is a fat, chubby girl cat who's a bit of a love interest for Simon's cat. Unfortunately, cats aren't really that romantic, so it's quite a contrast to the Simon's Cat um, Valentine's Day videos. Cats can actually mate with quite a few different partners, and they're not really fussy with who they choose to breed with, and um, they don't really choose a mate for life like birds do. Female cats are also known as queens, and a queen can be um, only receptive to mate when she's sort of hormonally ready. Prior to that, she may well swipe her paw at a male. When a female cat is in season, she'll call quite a lot or meow. And it's a very different sort of meow to what owners are normally used to. It's quite a persistent noise. And in fact, some owners that aren't familiar with this sound may actually think their cats are in pain, but this isn't true. Mm -hmm. They'll also get themselves into what's called the lordosis pose. This is where they actually go down on their front legs and put their bottoms in the air and sometimes put their tail to the side as well. And they're kind of, like I say, getting ready for mating. They will also notice cats will be um, a lot more affectionate. They may be doing a lot of rolling around. And they'll sometimes be um, grooming their back end a lot more than usual. Cats can start, actually start mating as young as four months of age, which is why I recommend neutering from four months. So there are actually many health benefits to getting cats neutered. So for both female cats and male cats, you can prevent certain cancers. There's many behavioural benefits. You can cut out sexual spraying. They're much less likely to roam. They're also less likely to get into fights. One queen or female cat that is not neutered can be responsible for as many as 20,000 kittens over a five-year period if all of those kittens weren't neutered. That's a lot of kittens. So that's why here at Cats Protection, we do a lot of neutering um, because we have so many cats and kittens all looking for good homes. Females can actually mate with multiple males. One litter of kittens can have each kitten having a different father. This can therefore throw up lots of different interesting coat colours in the litter as well as different behaviours. And in fact, the trait for boldness or how outgoing the cat is comes from the father. So, here is Chloe, her little ears. Tiny little mouth, and I've given her a great big fat sort of face and a little love heart collar. The thing I love most about Chloe is her huge, great big tail. She is based on my second cat, but she was uh, such a lovely, lovely cat, had a lovely temperament um, and very affectionate. You know, as a little boy growing up, we we're very close. So it was nice to get a bit of that memory into this film. This little beautiful girl cat who's a bit of a snob, but um, that's only in the Simon's Cat world, not in real life. Huh? Huh? Huh?
Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to Simon's Cat Logic. We'll be finding out from a cat expert why cats behave the way they do. Today we're exploring Let Me In, Let Me Out. Well, I think it's fair to say that if you are a cat owner, then you can basically say goodbye to privacy because they will follow you everywhere, especially if they're a, a, an older cat and, and they're sort of a lap cat, they want to be with you 24-7. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Cats are renowned for having a natural curiosity and so it's understandable that they want to know what's on the other side of a door. Cats are natural control freaks, so they'd rather have choice over their access. In the Simon's Cat video, Let Me In, Simon's Cat would be less reliant on Simon if he had an exclusive entry cat flap, such as a microchip cat flap or magnetic one. Um, this would allow Simon's Cat to have the choice of when to come in and out. One of the benefits of having an exclusive entry cat flap is that it only would let in Simon's Cat, for example, and not the other cats in the neighbourhood. It's popularly believed that Sir Isaac Newton, along with his many other achievements, invented the cat flap or cat door. If owners have lived with their cats for quite some time, they can build up quite a repertoire of communication with their cat. And this is where cats will try different things through trial and error. So therefore the cat's more likely to do this next time to get that response. So over time, cats may learn that if they do a particular type of meow, that the owners will respond and know what it means. So they might do a particular cry to say, let me outside, and a different cry to say, I want some food, and a different one again to say that they want some attention. Recently, researchers have found that cats have got two different types of purr, including the solicitation purr, which is basically a different purr that's a bit more intense when they want something from you. And they found that humans respond to this. Many owners think that cats train us, but really we're reinforcing these behaviours. It's a two-way form of communication between the cat and their owner. Cats have excellent hearing, between 55 and 77,000 hertz. This is actually at a higher frequency than dogs can hear. Well, Let Me Out is basically a bathroom uh, idea where whenever you go to the bathroom to have a shower or, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> whatever you do. Yeah, whatever you do. The story of this comes from my oldest cat, Jess, who's a real lap cat and she wants attention 24-7. So she'll follow me around, <coughs> meowing, meowing. Um, and she actually changed her meow now, so she goes, <coughs> It's really sort of quite impatient and starts to let me know in her voice. Um, but she will follow me around demanding attention and of course if you go to the bathroom she sits outside and just calls and calls and calls until you finally come out. Oh. 
Oh! <laughs> 